Wait, I thought this was, oh my God. I thought it was Photoshop. I thought he was making a joke about like the hair that he Photoshopped onto this woman's head. Oh my God, that's actually on her head. This British reality Folks, TV show is what do you get when a soon-to-be-married couple is given all the money they need for their dream wedding? But the groom has to plan the entire thing by himself while the bride is kept in the dark about everything until their actual wedding day. Bill Burr or LeBron on stream, pick one. Oof. That is literally... Whoa. That is the first time I've actually not picked Bill Burr. That's crazy. I don't know. I still, I God, I think I like Bill Burr as a stream guest more. It depends. Do we get to play basketball and develop a long-standing relationship? Because like Bill Burr on the stream one time versus a lifetime of friendship with LeBron because he sees my vibes and he's like, I respect you so much. You're pretty good at basketball. Like I want to take you under my wing and I want to actually teach you how to ball like myself. Then, you know, LeBron every day. It's just like, it sucks that his son, Bronny, probably has only heard about me in very negative connotations, if at all, due to Aiden Ross and that relationship that they have. Oh, I don't even want to think about that any further than I've already given thought to it. I love how you have a full on LeBron fanfic head cannon. What it's normal. These are normal feelings that people have about the goat. That's all I'm saying. Like we play basketball together. I accidentally call him dad. There's a brief moment where he pauses and he says, it's okay, my son. And then it's like, it's like we have a real connection in that moment. And then, you know, he's like, I will give you the secrets. Like, this is how you will be able to dunk like me. He's like six years older than you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and then he cradles me in his strong arms. Thank you. How do I unsub? If you don't have this level of admiration for LeBron, you are a clansman. Okay. <laughs> wow. A lot of a lot of racists in the chat today. Hmm. I'm normal. You guys are not. Yeah. It's crazy how many It's crazy how many how many white supremacists are in here, dude. It's fucked up. Spoiler alert, you get some of the worst weddings that have ever taken place. And this was the premise of the British reality TV show, Don't Tell the Bride. And we're going to watch a full episode today, but I thought it'd be fun to do a quick run through of some of the worst weddings that have taken place on this show. One episode featured a Beauty and the Beast themed wedding, which is already a pretty gnarly decision because I think you know how I feel about this. New wedding, but the groom absolutely went for it. He dressed like beast, like with animal prosthetics and stuff. <laughs> what are you wearing? And it's like, dude, beast turns into like a regular hot guy at the end of the movie. Just, just dress up like that. What does that say about the groom, right? Well, it's the most important day of my life, so I might as well dress like a furry. There was another episode that featured a groom who really likes to play darts. So naturally, he planned a darts-themed wedding. The bridesmaids wore dresses with dartboards on them. It's probably. Not not safe to do at a darts themed wedding. <laughs> Inside the reception, they had a bunch of dart boards and they even got a professional darts player to officiate the wedding. And of course, that's what a professional darts player Dude, that that's just literally a guy who just wanted to get better at darts using this TV show as a vehicle while simultaneously up his like once in a lifetime wedding to just learn about darts in a way that he wouldn't otherwise be able to. Okay. Also, this guy, you, this guy dresses up in the way that you think I dress up. Okay. That's just the New Jersey guy that owns a pool hall. Yeah. This guy is, is dripped out the wazoo, rich enough to give gifted subs to everyone in the chat at the top of the hour, sometimes 20 minutes into the hour when you forget to run the ad break at the top of the hour directly. Now, of course, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free. Let's from here's the three-minute break now. Looks like, man. <laughs> Why would you want a guy that looks like that officiating your wedding? Now, before the husband and wife say bullseye do, if there's anybody in the audience me? who objects... What? What, what is this? Okay, guys. ...to this marriage, speak now or forever hold your peace. 
You object? No, it's your bling, sir. It's so bright. Where the hell do you even get all of it? Target. Okay. Ow! So I think you guys get the gist of the show. Guys are super dumb and pretty much clueless when we're left to our own devices. And it's hilarious to watch. But my favorite part about this show is seeing like the husband's logic and how they arrive at the choices they make. And I found a great episode that demonstrates that pretty well. So without further ado, Let's watch an episode of Don't Tell the Bride. With just three weeks and 14,000 pounds to throw the wedding of a lifetime. So yeah, that piece of information like almost excuses any of the insane decisions that the grooms make. Because, I don't know if you guys know this, but my wife and I actually had two weddings. And let me tell you, each of those weddings took way longer than three weeks to plan. And they cost much more than $14,000. Or sorry, they use pounds. They use pounds. He's a baller. Baller, dude. Flex on them. Pounds in, in, in the UK. 14,000 pounds is $24,000. So yeah, it's not like a super low budget, I guess. It's not that bad, but still. like Things add up when you, when you plan a wedding, trust me. You'll see going forward that even with the budget and time constraints, there is no excuse for the wedding that is put on by this groom. This episode follows 33-year-old Adam and 23-year-old Bianca. <clears throat> and the episode starts with a little blurb about how they met. When they met 18 months ago on a dating app. When I first saw Adam, I was attracted to instantly because he had like the rugby photo, the action shot. She looked like she squatted, so she had a had a nice uh, nice bum. Nice bum. Sorry. I just... British people are insane, bro. They need to not. I don't know. They just need to not. Don't do it. Don't be British. Not even for a moment. What's happening here? She looked like she had a fucking bum. Yeah. Fuck it out. They're perfect for one another, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> I never cry, but Sometimes you hear something so nice and, and you just can't help it. Nice bum. And this next part of their origin story is pretty wild because apparently Bianca was not planning on getting into a serious relationship whatsoever because she had a big trip planned in a few months. I knew I was going away. My tickets were booked. But when Bianca left for the trip, Adam really missed her. So he decided to join Bianca on her nine month long vacation. We went from just being, you know, casually dating to literally spending nine months in each other's pockets. Take notes, boys. <laughs> That's a good dude right there. That's what you got to do, if man. If a girl says she's not looking for anything serious because she's going on a really long... Here from Live SF, can you please explain how the Allies' atomics used in Japan was colonial or imperial act when Japan was literally an empire and declared war on the Allies? Yes, I can. It's called watch the rest of the clip, you idiot, instead of being clipped out of context like a dumb f which I very clearly pointed out literally immediately after where that clip conveniently stops. Instead of coming in here and being like, eh, 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 eh. no, of course, Japan did its own litany of war crimes here from LFF. Literally just watch the rest of the clip. Many of you would be able to personally understand a whole bunch of other things that you're confused by. Lamau, how can I watch the rest of the clip if that's where it ends? That's the full clip. Oh my God. Do you not know how clips work? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Bro, I swear to God, it's like talking to a four year old, dude. Bro, these motherfuckers literally don't have object permanence. There's a. When you click on a clip on Reddit, when people clip shit on Twitch, there's a. There's a. There's a button right there that says watch more. Chad, if you ever feel useless, remember this guy. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem. The question you have to ask yourself is, do I know? Do I know how clips work? Do I know how Twitch stream works? Twitch streaming. Do you think I went live, said that, and ended the stream? Do you think my stream three days ago or whenever that clip was actually from was just a 58-second stream? Do you think that's what I did? You think I just went live, said that, and then ended the stream? You think that was the that was the entire conversation? That was a, a 30 second stream, 50 second stream, however long the clip is? Do you think it was just a I did a TikTok clip stream that day? I feel like they're just trolling. No, I think they might be that stupid. Smart as Hasanabe hater. Not really, no. And I don't care. You still said it when it's hardly justifiable. But like 
You said it. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Uh, uh, I know in his mind, he thinks he's owning me too. That's the worst part about it is it's just like, like he thinks like he's too stupid to recognize that of course there's further context beyond the 20 second snapshot that he got. I wasn't even hating. Feels like you're just insecure about the answer that you gave. So you're just lashing out brother. Of course, Imperial Japan is a fascist Imperial entity that did its own war crimes. America's nukes had nothing to do with the rape of Manchuria. Okay, that's it. America's use of atomics in Japan as the Japanese empire, or not uh, Manchuria, sorry, Nanking. Oh my God, that's it. That's it. That's it. America's utilization of nukes against the Japanese empire was not born out of a desire to liberate China or other Japanese colonies, especially considering that Japan was already drawing up conditional surrender, according to American admirals themselves. Once again, you could have personally looked for additional context before coming in here and chirping. How difficult was it not to say family atomics? I always want to say family atomics. That is, of course, if you did care about the context, but you clearly do not because you were motivated by a Reddit clip chimp. On trip in a few months, that's an open invitation, brother. And at the end of their vacation, Adam decided to pop the question. I came up with this idea of uh, making a heart out of rose petals. The fact that he'd said it, you know, that's something that I wouldn't expect Adam to be capable of. Okay. <laughs> that's definitely something every guy wants to hear from their fiance. Yeah, I never knew he was capable of setting things up. You know, I, I asked him to set up the patio furniture one day. He got so scared he called the cops. Aww. Well, he tried to, but he never really figured out how to set up his phone. And shortly after their engagement, they discovered that Bianca was pregnant. 18 months after first swiping right, the couple now have a new life together in South Wales. So now we got a good understanding of the couple. And at this point of the episode, they asked Bianca what her ideal wedding would be if she could make all the decisions. My ideal wedding would just be a glamorous, classical day. I don't want a theme or anything related to what we've done before. I want this to be a new chapter, you know, a new experience. No jokey, gimmicky things, you know, just very elegant. Okay, so classy, elegant, simple wedding, no theme, no jokey gimmicks or anything. Not so does it make it colonial? No, man. American imperialism and American colonial action was in reference to literally everything else that we talk about when we talk about a country that has been historically wronged by the Western world, okay? America's usage of nuclear weapons in and of itself, well, I guess one could make the argument it did turn Japan into not a colony directly, but instead a vassal state. But that's not what I'm talking about there. It's obviously responding to a broader context, which you refuse to acknowledge, I don't know how else to describe it to you. No, America's usage of the atom bomb twice in Japan is not an imperial action or a colonial action. That was more so in the broader context of the conversation that we were having about racism against a dominant group. I, God, I'm trying so hard not to ban people. It's, it's hard. It's, it's getting harder and harder. Oh, let's Not continue. referencing anything they've done in the past. Try to remember those when we hear Adam's ideas. Fate has uh, played a huge part in my life, so I'm going to let fate decide uh, the major decisions of the wedding. I will come up with various options, and uh, Bianca will unknowingly choose her own wedding. Absolutely 10,000 IQ play right there. He's gonna make Bianca randomly choose what her wedding is going to be like with the use of sealed envelopes because... It gives me sort of a get out clause because ultimately if, if the day doesn't work out, then it's Bianca's fault. Nice, man. <laughs> so that's a good guy right there. Dude. Just totally absolves himself of any responsibility and puts all of it on her still. Even though he is doing everything, all of the pressure is still on her somehow. <laughs> Good guy. So while Adam plans the wedding with his brother for the next three weeks, Bianca is sent away on a little family vacation that Adam isn't <laughs> allowed to invite himself to this time. And as Bianca sadly drives away, Adam immediately starts to work out the details of the wedding. Or sorry, I think I said too many words. 
Okay, um, it just took 50 minutes. Okay, that's a reasonable answer. I don't know why you're so pissed. It's because you're annoying, smarmy, douchey, got motivated by a clip chip sub, uh, subreddit clip that is specifically hater fuel. I'm banning you permanently. And also you wasted 17,754 people's times while in the process of, you know, making the entire stream about yourself, greatly abusing the charity that I try to maintain when talking to chatters in general, because I value it as, uh, you know, a, a teachable moment potentially you also personally said you refuse to seek out the context and instead try to duke me out in the marketplace of ideas those are the reasons why i banned you okay i'm glad you agree with me at the end of it though adam immediately starts to work out Imagine he just doesn't get anything ready for the next three weeks because he's just been working out the entire time. Bianca shows up at like an empty church three weeks later and he's at the altar like, Oh, how do I look? I spent 14,000 pounds on steroids. I hope that's chill. Okay, this is when we find out Adam's two ideas for the possible themes of their upcoming wedding. So already it's not looking good because Bianca clearly said she does not want any themes. I don't want a theme. And both of Adam's ideas are themes themed weddings. Me and Bianca fell in love through, through travel, maybe getting married on a plane. And the other option is obviously a big part of my life before Bianca came along, was well, obviously I was a prison officer. So what? We'll, um, we'll look at getting married in a prison. What? Get married in a prison. <laughs> yeah, his two options are either getting married on a plane or in a prison. I mean- Dude, marry the two, prison plane, like that Nicolas Cage movie. What was it? It was like Con Air. Holy shit. Okay, Con Air would be kind of, it would go hard. I think Con Air wedding would be actually kind of nutty. I hope he does that. If he does that, that's sick. Fucking, what's the difference? <laughs> Get me out of here, I'm innocent. So to remind you, Adam is gonna have his brother present two options, like two sealed envelopes to Bianca for her to decide like major aspects Bro. of their wedding. But she doesn't know what she's picking really. So Do if Con it ends Air. up bad, it's all Bianca's fault. Do Con Air. Oh my God. This guy could have the best of both worlds. Oh my God. Why choose when you can have both? Why choose when you can have both and have the best of both worlds as a, as a consequence, as a direct consequence, literally automatically making the situation incredible. Quote unquote. If the day doesn't work out, then it's Bianca's fault. You know, because she chose. And also, Nicolas Cage personally would probably officiate the wedding because he's always doing shit like that. You know what I mean? He's in like deep debt. Please. Chose it, right? And it's like, not really. That's really not how that works, especially when both the options are bad. No matter what she picks, it's going to be a shit wedding. Also, like, as bad as the plane idea is, at least it like kind of makes sense. They love traveling. You travel on a plane, but getting married in a prison because Adam used to be a prison guard? Uh, That's insane. Obviously, don't base your wedding off of a job you used to have. What the f So right around here is where the wedding will take place. Looks perfect. Can I ask why you want to get married in the desert anyway? Well, I actually used to work out here, so it just felt right. Oh, okay, that makes sense. What'd you do for work? I used to disarm active minefields. Oh, cool. Well, if you would just follow me this way. Ah! said I was good at my job. Okay, so Adam's brother heads over to Bianca so she can make her first decision, prison or plane. She's obviously pretty nervous and confused, but she ends up picking the right envelope. Not the right envelope, because like both of them are wrong, I think, but she picks the envelope on the right. I'm gonna go right. And that means- Yes, we're doing the plane, yeah? So they're getting married on a plane. And at first I thought this was gonna be like a regular plane with like strangers on it and shit, which would have been insane, but like I've seen crazier shit on airplanes, so I guess it's not that big of a deal. If I had to choose between seeing someone get married or seeing somebody like pick their toenails on a plane, I'm picking the wedding every time. But Adam at least has the decency to book out an entire airplane to fit all the wedding guests. I know Taylor Swift would be so proud of him. Just a joke. And you may be thinking, now this plane that Adam is renting, is it going anywhere? Is this plane whisking everybody away to a beautiful wedding destination? Is the plane taking people to the reception at least? No. None of them. The plane actually isn't going anywhere. Adam is spending 5,000 pounds to put everybody in a plane that will take off into the air, fly around the airport for a bit so they can get married while they're in the air, and then it's gonna land <laughs> back in the same airport. That's such a dumb idea. When a girl dreams about walking down the aisle one day, I don't think they're picturing that type of aisle. And also, dude, 
Bianca was eight months pregnant at the time of filming this. I don't know what it's like to be pregnant, but I can assume it's pretty uncomfortable. And I think being on a plane, the most uncomfortable th place like in the world, is probably a bad combo for a pregnant person. And dude, the next part of this episode is like so hard to watch. Bianca and her mom take a tour of Bianca's like dream wedding venue. And before we go any further, yes, I know, I'll, I'll talk about it. I'm thinking the same thing. Holy shit. That hair is gnarly. Impressive, really. I want to know how many moms took a screenshot of this episode, printed it out, and immediately sprinted to their hairdresser. <laughs> because this is the ultimate Karen cut. Dude, if I was working a retail job and I saw her one- Wait, I thought this was- Oh my god. I thought it was Photoshop. I thought he was making a joke about, like, the hair that he photoshopped onto this woman's head. Oh my god, that's actually on her head. It literally is so, it's so fake looking. It's actually insane. This is like in video games and like shitty video games. When in the character creation screen, you have this option to get this haircut with this exact color. Only when you tweak around with it too much. And even then you're like, come on, this is so ridiculous looking. And she went and did that to her own head in the real world. Walk in. I am quitting on the spot. All jokes aside, though, as diagonal as her... Also, someone needs to check Curtis, because right now, he's literally using racial slurs like Karen. Unacceptable racial slurs. Much worse racial slurs, according to Redditors, than the N-word. Like, if... if <laughs> I'm a Redditor, and of course, as a Redditor, if Curtis had said the N-word here while referencing her, without malice, of course... Like, if he had said this N-word, I would be less mad than the fact that he said she is a Karen. How is Karen a slur? What? Well, you know, since using the term cracker against a white person is uh, the most heinous race crime that anyone could ever commit, Karen is on the same exact category. Her bangs are. She's actually the most level-headed person in this whole episode, I think. And this part is just so hard to watch because all Bianca wants is a nice classic wedding to celebrate their love. You know, just no bells or whistles. Super simple. And you'd assume that would be easy for Adam to pull off. Peace and love, he seems like a pretty simple guy. But while Bianca's looking at this wedding venue, Adam is on like a cramped airplane like, yeah, this will be good, bro. Perfect for a wedding. Yeah, maybe they'll even have a... It's only funnier that he's like kind of a giant too, which is like... As a big boy myself, I absolutely despise planes because they're so cramped. A movie playing on the little telly screens. Is being 17,000 feet in the air pregnant gonna make her happy? No, she hasn't got a choice. That's the right. situation I've left her in. <laughs> Such a shithead. Sorry, I'm being a little mean. Maybe he'll redeem himself with the wedding reception. Unfortunately, he wants the reception to be themed as well. Adam wants to hold a Thai beach party reception. Because they got engaged in Thailand. And although the plane... Okay. I think this dude secretly just wants her to have the child in international air space so that he can like have one of those once in a lifetime babies that has like, how does that work? Do you get like an international passport if you're like above the sea or something? You know what I mean? If you're in like no country's territory, technically, do you get to have a citizenship for every country? How does that work? Especially because the plane is not going to another airport. What? That has to be a myth? No, you are a citizen of the country that flags the craft. Departing airport? It's based on where the plane is registered? Wait, really? What if you are above... What if... Okay. What if the plane... <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> what if the plane departs from Heathrow? And as it's like literally over the ocean... With no, with no destination set whatsoever. And the lady gives birth. What happens? What happens then? Do all countries accept babies born there as citizens? No. No, they don't. America does. But what would happen if you're in the, if you're in the air? Plane is a bad idea. Maybe he'll pick a pretty venue for everybody to eat and dance away the memory of their terrible... I think they should just give the baby like a cool new status where the baby can be a citizen of every country. How many times is it going to happen anyway? You know what I mean? And just a, just air baby. Okay. And when you ask the baby like, oh, what country are you from? And the baby's like, I'm Mr. Worldwide. 
I don't know why the baby is able to speak and knows about Pitbull, but he's he's like, I'm Air Baby. That is probably the premise of a 90s rom-com. Back when they used to pump those shits out. <laughs> Air Baby, Mr. Worldwide, Dale. And Nick Cage is there too. Dude, you could film it right then and there. High altitude wedding. Let's see what he picks. Whoa. Who the f looks at this venue and thinks wedding reception? An actual ghost could look at this venue and be like, um, no thank you. This is way too scary. Like this is where the final f Per the US State Department, a child born in international waters should list place of birth as at sea, if a child is born in flight in a region which no country claims, he or she would officially be classified as born in the air. The U.S. unusually grants citizenship to any child born on a plane over the U.S. territory or within its airspace. Okay, I think my idea is cooler. The fight of a ninja movie takes place. This is where... House. This is warehouse. This old dirty warehouse with a leaky ceiling is the venue that Adam chooses for the reception. And he hires this guy to transform the building into Thailand. So I want all my guests to be transported to uh, Thailand. It's also super funny that he says he wants all of his guests transported to Thailand after being on a vehicle that could literally transport them to Thailand. We're not gonna get a better space than this, are we really? I don't think like, so. Man. So I'm Well, the reality is, I don't think you can fly everyone to Thailand on a $14,000 budget gonna shake your hand on it guys 14,000 quid budget yeah it's not gonna be enough and fly everyone to thailand yeah why thailand because he loves thailand pick up the base figure it out why don't you 40,000 quid you must know better places exist right Feel bad for these guys okay so they're now halfway through their 14,000 pound budget but all they have is the plane ride and the reception venue they still need to buy rings dresses suits shoes food drinks and a bunch of sand to be transported to the warehouse so it can look like thailand we want to fill it with sand you know the things that every wedding has and you know as much as i'm making fun of these guys budgeting it's pretty difficult right it's hard to do for a wedding it's hard to do in our every Everyday lives, which is why I'm so excited to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Rocket Money. That's right, this video is sponsored by Rocket Money. Folks, a little while back, I found out that I was being charged every month for a podcast hosting service that I stopped using like a year ago. And this has happened to me several times in the past where I sign up for something as like a free trial, and then the 30 days ethical react slide on playing a f go by, they start charging me, I completely forget about it, and then by the time I remember it, it's too late. We've all been there. Well, today's sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage your money better. And I'm using Rocket Money to cancel all these unwanted subscriptions. They make it so easy to safely and securely identify recurring charges because they can cancel all those unwanted subscriptions for you. You can even cancel from within the app with just a few taps. And that means you don't have to worry about lengthy, awkward customer service calls. I'm also using Rocket Money to set budgets. With Rocket Money, you can analyze your spending habits to create a custom budget that fits your lifestyle. Automatically monitor your spending by category and get notifications when you've exceeded your limits. So whether you're saving up for something specific or just trying to improve your spending habits in general, Rocket Money is perfect for you. Rocket Money has helped save its customers up to $740 a year when they use all their features with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. So if you want to save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. Just go to rocketmoney.com slash Curtis or simply click the link in the description to get started today for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. Again, that's rocketmoney.com slash Curtis to get started today for free. You hear that? For free. Okay, thank you Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. Back to me. And next up is the dress. One of the most important parts of the wedding day. You know, some girls go their whole lives dreaming of their perfect wedding dress. It's an incredibly pivotal part of the wedding. So it's such a big decision, Adam has no choice. But Bianca does. She has to choose whether she wants a cheap dress or an expensive dress. Ideally, we, we want the least expensive. And they say chivalry is <laughs> dead. I don't want too much booby see. I like this one with the cleavage. But unfortunately, she chooses the cheap dress. So the cheap choice it is then. In this next part, Bianca goes uh, dress shopping so we, the audience, can see what type of dress 
that she would choose if it was up to her. And this is when she voices her concern about Adam choosing the dress. I'm a little bit worried because I'm seven months pregnant now. It's hopefully Adam thinks about that as well when he sort of thinks about his choices. Honey, Honey you've you got, got a big storm, storm coming. But no, that's totally fair. Like I said, I don't know what it's like to be pregnant. I can't imagine what that would feel like to have like a baby inside of you. That's weird. Not weird. It's, good. it's a miracle of, miracle of life. <laughs> Being pregnant, that's probably the craziest hardest thing a person can do. I'd like to think most husbands-to-be would consider that, obviously, if they had a pregnant wife. But we did just see Adam choose the birthplace of hepatitis for a wedding reception, so obviously he doesn't take that into consideration at all. Bianca chooses a beautiful designer dress, while Adam orders a 160-pound dress off the internet. The current 160-pound, a 160-quid dress, yeah, it's nice, it's nice pounds by the way not like the dress doesn't weigh 160 pounds although that wouldn't surprise me if he did that no put it on it'll be a good workout dress for women is probably the most important thing uh it's, it sort of determines how they feel on the day but ultimately she picked that option for it to be the cheapest dress so if she doesn't like it then that was her own fault like yo no it's not <laughs> what an asshole dude that's so mean she didn't pick it she picked a random envelope that you showed she no dude i can't imagine bianca watching this episode back for the first time and not divorcing him immediately his logic is just so flawed you know like imagine on the plane bianca is like why did you pick a plane to get married on this is so dumb i didn't want this either guys the entire premise of the show is that the husbands fuck up the most important day of this of these ladies lives that's the whole point okay that's why it's TV magic. <laughs> Stop yelling. <laughs> like she kind of, at the end of the day, she literally personally decided to be on this TV show knowing exactly what the premise is. You picked it, okay? We could have been getting married in a prison right now. It's like, dude, no matter what she picks, it's gonna suck because you suck. Sorry, I digress. Now it's time for Adam to show the bridesmaids the dresses that they'll be wearing at the wedding. And for some reason, he picks 10 pound neon pink and yellow dresses oh, i don't know the no. reasoning behind bro 10 quid 10 quid for the dresses they look like highlighters mate what are you doing then no and that decision i feel like maybe he watched an episode of power rangers and he was like oh okay so pink and yellow are girl color Got it. And I feel like for this whole episode, Adam's been kind of operating on like another planet. Every decision he's made has been objectively awful, but everyone around him is like, oh, yeah, all right, mate, that sounds pretty chipper then, bruv. But this next part of the episode is when Adam finally gets a dose of reality from the sand delivery guy of all people. Yeah, I never had a sand delivery guy at my wedding, but... His presence was missed for sure. So the Sandman quotes them 2,500 pounds for the amount of sand that they'll need to completely cover the warehouse floor. Which, by the way, is roughly 16 times more expensive than Bianca's wedding dress. But really, what's more important, ladies? A nice dress or 150 tons of sand? You can't make a wicked baller castle out of a nice dress. I'll tell you that. Ladies, say no to the dress. Yes to the sand. Power, power over spice is power over all. But after literally the word like the only reason why sand would be even remotely fine i guess in a wedding is if you're doing it at like a beach or something in every other context sand is so bad it gets in every orifice it just doesn't make sense he's literally bringing sand to an area where there could be no sand it's awful. After the Sandman quotes them on that price, he goes on to warn them about the safety of the warehouse. You've got rainwater coming in. There's going to be electrical wiring everywhere. You have, in my opinion, massive health and safety. I know my entire community is full of boomers who are at least 35 plus because so many of you mother like classic Anakin take all of you soy facing Star Wars boomers, dude. Oh my God. Oh my God, dude. You guys are literally watching me in between your shelf that has all of your Funko Pops neatly aligned. Okay. All of your Star Wars Legos. <laughs> my Funko Pops. It's a classic meme. Stop. Implications oh, that no, you really yeah. need to take seriously. Yeah. So Adam moves on from that dingy warehouse because of the safety hazards. And this was the perfect thing to happen to them because now this is a fresh start. They can pick a completely different venue that will suit their needs much better. And they do find a new venue. Goodbye, old dirty, stinky warehouse. Hello, new dirty, stinky warehouse. Yeah, man. He just finds a different 
dirty warehouse. <laughs> oh, that old warehouse was absolutely filthy, mate. But this warehouse is dirty. Adam then heads to a department store, buys two wedding rings. 69 pounds. <laughs> Hilarious. He then spends 500 pounds on a suit, which is wild, considering he only spent 160 pounds on his wife's dress. He then tops it all off by spending 130 pounds on plastic buckets. I'm not 100% sure why he got the buckets. Ooh, maybe they'll be handed to the guests when they walk into the venue because they'll probably puke upon seeing where they are. It's pretty smart. Oh, this yeah. next part is pretty wild. This is when Bianca gets her first glimpse into what her wedding is. Wait, they're gonna make sandcastles, dude. What do you mean? Is going to look like. Before, it was just her pointing at random envelopes. The husband is a perfect example of a literal gorilla painted to blend in with British humans. <laughs> Oh, now Jesus she has Christ. to face reality when her wedding dress is delivered to her house. Are you, are you joking me? I am literally gonna cry. All right, so things aren't looking too good right now. But who knows, right? Maybe when she finally sees the dress, she'll fall in love with it. I love that everything is more expensive than the dress. <laughs> The neckline's crap, the arms are crap, the length of it's crap, the material's shocking. rubbish. Why you play games with me now? Okay, this is really sad to watch, obviously. But, <laughs> but it's even sadder because... No, it's awesome. Because they're British. Like, of what we know. Like, I'm sorry about your dress, but you don't even know the half of it. You don't know anything about the dilapidated warehouse that's being filled with sand. Ugh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's about to get so much worse. And this is the challenge of the show, I guess. Weddings are inherently expensive, so if you spend a big chunk of your budget on one aspect of it, the other aspects are gonna suffer. So it's just a matter of knowing your partner and what they value the most. The premise of the show is awesome, dude. Dudes are so stupid. Sometimes, dudes don't know their partners that well, at all and it's just so frustrating because it's like you could just get married in like a pretty part of a public park right and like m&m there i got married in a pretty part of a public park but no seriously just get married in a park for free rent out like a big cheap tent for the reception and then spend the rest of the money on stuff that like matters right like why does there always have to be a theme in these episodes it's like uh you know an extreme makeover home edition when they're showing the family the renovated house and then when they get to the are you for an expensive wedding no, dude, I just, I don't, look, listen, I'm very weird. I'm not the best person when it comes to this sort of stuff. I'm not, like, a big fan of birthdays. I can't stand, like, no disrespect. I went to the commencement ceremony for my mother. I love her. But I'm not, like, a big fan of that sort of stuff either. And I am not, like, I'm not a fan of any of that shit, okay? I'm not. It's just entirely dependent on who your partner is and what their wishes are. Okay, that's what you gotta you gotta go along with it. That's it. Would you stream your wedding? No, that's insane, dude. What is going on, dude? Absolutely not. The kids' room. They're like, "Hey, Braxton, we heard you like swimming." So we actually drilled all of your bedroom furniture to the bottom of your pool. This show is like that, but with wedding. But we're getting close to the end now, so let's get back to the episode. So I was speaking to my dad the other day, and, uh, yeah. and he said a line, it just resonates through my head all the time. At most, I'll vlog it, put it on, and then Austin Ox can maybe get around to uploading it eight years later, right around the time where I'm filing for a divorce. Now, listen, son. If she loves you, she'll forgive you. Good attitude to have, brother. All right, guys, it's time. It is now the morning of the wedding day, and everybody is getting ready. Bridesmaids are wearing their neon dresses. Bianca's mom has got her neon hair. And I can only assume Bianca is going to have her neon Adam's neck when she sees it. The guests arrive at the airport, and they got high hopes for the wedding. Had to have high, high hopes for the wedding. That's the only information we got told was a passport. We're hoping he's going to fly us to Spain. Okay, super messed up to tell them to bring their passport, right? That is diabolical. A passport implies the act of leaving a country. They're not even leaving the same airspace, really. They're just flying above the Bristol airport. Why'd you tell them to bring their passport? That's me. Like, imagine if someone invites you to their birthday party and they're like, I don't want to give anything away, but make sure you pack a bathing suit. And then when you get to their house, they're like, all right, you're going to help me nail my kid's furniture to the bottom of the pool. I saw it on TV. All right, guys, it's go time. Adam shows up to the airport in his finest sneakers, boards the plane, and waits for Bianca to arrive. Bianca enters through the back of the plane. Adam and best man Alec are hiding up front. I wouldn't really call that hiding. I don't think you can really hide anywhere on a plane. All Bianca has to do is look to the front of the plane, which is, by the way, the usual direction people look when they're on a plane. Like, does she really not see him? God, I'm so excited to get married. And on a plane, too. 
Are we seriously getting married on a plane? That's so stupid. I hate planes. And I'm pregnant too. Oh yeah. This is so uncomfortable. If our marriage happens on this plane today, this will officially be the worst thing that has ever happened on any plane ever. Okay. Uh, well, Don't be stupid. It's time for you to give birth, yeah? Whatever. I'm on a plane. That's why we did it. So the child could have a place of birth in international waters, right? That's what I did. That was my goal. Air baby. Also, airborne, mate. Over it. At least we know the baby will be safe. You know, they say flying is the safest way to travel. Welcome on board, everybody, to this very special flight on this gorgeous Boeing aircraft. Yay, I want a divorce! And this next part is terrific. They reach their cruising altitude, and then they call Bianca up to the front. Would Bianca John please join us at the front of the aircraft? Dude, and she still doesn't know that this is the wedding. She still thinks they're flying to a destination for the wedding. And like the poor dad doesn't even get to walk her down the aisle. It's like, well, I mean, like, I don't know how he would have in the first place because his airplane aisles are pretty small. I will warn you, a little cringe warning. The actual wedding on the plane is like really rough to watch. So strap in. Let your marriage be a time of waking each morning and falling in love with each other all over again. That was the official like wedding then. That was. We haven't got those. Oh my god! <laughs> what are we doing now then? Though? What do you mean? What are we doing now then? You should know. You planned the wedding, man. <laughs> hey, what are we doing now then? What are we doing? Dude, no vows, nothing. The wife walked up to the front of a plane. A guy said a nice sentence, and then that was it. Like, what did Adam expect to happen? Why did he want it? Why? Why did he want to do this? Why did he want to do this on a plane? It makes this no sense. Rough, dude, but we're almost done, okay? Bianca is understandably a little confused by the wedding ceremony. How is the prison the better option of the two options that he had for the wedding? Adam really thinks the whole day is going to turn around when she sees the reception venue. When you see the next sort of venue, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised and amazed. Just picture in your head He's thick what as you think the reception is going to look like. Now, whatever you have in your head, make it a million times worse. And that's what it looks like. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. What the f Do I have an option to unsubscribe? Yes. But you will see the ads at the top of the hour then, mate. That's right. At the top of the hour, there's a free minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for five dollars or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully that's me. The top of the hour is upon us, yeah. Here's the three minute handbrake break now. Fuck. <laughs> that looks like shit, my man. That looks like poo. Looks like the unknown is about to pop out. I don't know what you're talking about, mate. It looks like Thailand. Oh my god. Dude, I, I love the one tiny blue sky photo backdrop. And then the rest is just filthy brick walls, dude. And yet, no cutlery or plates, nothing, just buckets. Babe, it's awful. Wow. Like this wasn't the reaction I was expecting. Adam is so dumb. I'm sorry. He's such an idiot. I can't imagine how many criminals escaped under his watch when he was a prison guard. All they probably had to do was just ask Adam to be set free and he'd be like, okay, no problem. What are we doing now, then? What are we doing now, then? And dude, I really feel bad for Bianca because by the end of this whole day, she is a broken woman. She has lost all hope and sanity. The suits are tacky, the dress is tacky, the flowers are tacky, the shoes are tacky. At least you get to link. <laughs> like, dude, this is her Joker origin story, dude. I want to know how I got this wedding ring. So the episode ends with Bianca and Adam enjoying the rest of their night to the best of their ability. And then we can only assume they live happily ever after while they raise their baby boy together. Yeah, she's crying because of how awful the wedding is. So that was an episode of Don't Tell the Bride. This is an evil show, I think. Give dudes a small budget and a limited amount of time to plan like the most important 
important day of their lives. That's bad news. And I'm not sympathizing or anything. I'm not trying to cut Adam any slack here. But like, this is a dastardly television program. And that is proven even further when the credits roll and it is revealed that this show was devised by John Rowland. It all makes sense. This is a show that only could have been devised, okay? It was not created. No more wedding planners, okay? We need wedding devisers. I devised some plans for us tonight, bro. We gotta use that word way more. Now I thought this was gonna be the end of the video. It's not. Bianca and Adam's story does not end here. It turns out I was wrong. They did not go on to live happily ever after. I found an article about this couple that came out a little while after their episode aired titled, Don't Tell the Bride Star Who Had Disastrous Wedding in a Sand-Filled Warehouse Recalls How She Uncovered Her Husband's Affair While He Was in a Coma. Now that's what I call turbulence. <laughs> Let's read some of the article because holy shit, this is insane. Bianca was at the gym and Brock, their son, at the nursery when Adam called her from their home one day in September 2017. He was slurring his words, not making sense, and he said he didn't feel right. I phoned for an ambulance and the controller said it sounded like a stroke. By the time I got home, he was semi-conscious on the floor. The ambulance arrived just after me and I followed it to the hospital. It later emerged that Adam, who had just taken part in a bodybuilding contest, was suffering from rhabdomyolysis, the breakdown of muscle tissue that leads to the release of muscle fibers into the bloodstream. The rare condition often occurring in endurance athletes can be life-threatening. I called mom on the way to the hospital to tell her what had happened, recalls Bianca, and as we were talking, my phone battery died. I had Adam's phone with me, so I switched to his. He never made a secret of his security codes, and it pinged as a message came through. It read, What are you doing today, babe? I thought, babe? That's a bit cozy. But I laughed and told myself it was probably completely innocent. Okay, first off, how the fuck did he even go into a coma? That doesn't make sense to me. How can one slip into a coma when there's already zero brain activity. Right? <laughs> At the hospital, Adam was oh. in intensive care and I sat in the family room distraught, anxiously waiting for news. Then another text came through, just two question marks. I thought, what the hell? I clicked on the profile photo of the sender, which showed three women. I thought, this isn't right. I had a little word with myself, don't do anything, he's really poorly, but I couldn't help it. I turned detective to find out who had messaged my husband. Bianca, who had never suspected Adam was being unfaithful, scoured social media and uncovered the identity of the woman with whom he had evidently been having an affair. On a rugby mate's WhatsApp group, he found that Adam had shared photos of his lover in her underwear, together with graphic details of their clandestine sex life with his friends. Ew. Yeah, and now I don't feel so bad calling him dumb so many times. I think Adam was putting a little bit too much stock in that advice from his father. If she loves you, she'll forgive you. And if you're wondering what happened next, Adam woke up from his coma and completely recovered. And once he did, Bianca immediately left him. Crazy turn of events, dude. Not really shocking that the guy that didn't really think about his wife at all during the wedding planning continued to not think about his wife at all once they were married. So what did we learn, guys? He was thinking about this other lady. These are dumb as hell and probably shouldn't be in charge of large decisions. And that's the whole sentence. I really didn't need to say anything after that. Now, is that new information? Not at all. Is it important? Yes! All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button because one like equals one grain of sand I will bring into my office. And leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this whole thing. I'm excited to see what you guys have to say about this one. And guys, subscribe. Subscribe right now. What are you doing? Almost at 5 million. Let's freaking get it, okay? And as soon as you press the subscribe button, you become a valued citizen of Kurdistan. If you didn't know, Kurdistan is the best place to live in the world, and I'm the mayor. So you have to be nice to me. It's the law. And check the description. Back. His second wedding was the prison wedding. No way this was the actual wedding. No woman would actually agree to that. No. They're British. That's it. I think you failed to comprehend that. They're British. There's an episode on a pig farm where the bridesmaids wore pig onesies. I don't know if we talked about it. What the f <sighs> all right. It'll be all for the day. Okay, we'll do the chuple video on bread tabs. Not today, but tomorrow.